this is um, a bit of a meta talk, talk about a talk. Um, has anyone here heard of Tech Hub? Two. <laughs> so um, Tech Hub is um, a, a initiative, is it going to get bigger? Probably isn't. No. Okay. Um, of ITP, the Institute. IT professionals, um, formerly the um, New Zealand Computer Society. And they're getting out to, into schools and talking to um, secondary school students about um, careers in IT. Um, the motivation being that um, IT um, companies in New Zealand are finding it difficult to fill vacancies. So that's what that's about. Um, so they get uh, people from industry um, who would like to go along and do this, and, and you might get called upon to do maybe one a month or, or perhaps not that, that often. Um, they also get um, the tertiary sector representatives, so they can answer the questions about courses are on, on offer and what subjects you would need to do at school in order to get entry to particular courses, um, which is great because I wouldn't have the faintest clue about those sorts of questions. Um, and the, the ITP staff themselves um, do, do some sort of more general talks, but they're really keen to get more people doing these um, volunteer talks where people talk about their job, um, how they got to be in that job, um, and the sort of jobs that people that they work with do. So a, a broad-ish perspective, but it's, it's really your personal experience is the story that, that we're getting across there. So, I mean, who wouldn't want to talk about subjects as yourself, <laughs> your story, and why you do what you do? Um, the challenge is you have to do it in a way that resonates with teenagers. Um, I, I would add, or you won't get asked back, but the reality is they will ask you back, and hopefully you'll get better <laughs> over time. Um, so um, that was the talk about the talk. Um, this is the talk that... Um, that... Um, I typically do. One of the things that I've learned is you have to be very flexible on time. So the ITP people will give you a general idea of, of maybe think about a 40-minute talk with, with um, questions, uh, question and answer time. Um, and so I've, I've sort of got that covered, but the reality is that it's not uncommon to go in and find out that, yes, there is a 40-minute slot, but there's two people sharing it. Um, and strangely, no one knew that beforehand. Um, it's happened more than once. Um, so, yeah, having something where you can cut a chunk out of it easily is, is a good strategy. Um, or, when the bell rings and they all get up and leave, you can stop talking. That's, a, that's another... <laughs> Another approach. Um, so this is what I take them through, telling them I want to talk in, about careers in IT in general, but mostly specifically about programming, because that's what I do, and some things that they could do, some paths that they could follow if they wanted to pursue a career like that. Um, so then I sort of show them a few people that work in the company that I work at in different jobs and tell them lies about what they do. Um, <laughs> so, no, most of, it's, most of it's true. But, you know, I, I sort of wish through there. And sometimes there'll be questions and people will say, oh, well, what do so-and-so type job people do? And I, I take them through that. Um, but it's really good to have... Um, an actual person in mind when you're talking about the sorts of things these people do, because it makes it more real and easier for them to identify with. And if, if you know, there's, there's 
personal aspects. You know, if you if you can say, well, so and so, he's he's 25 years old, and he joined us when he'd come back from his OE after doing such and such. Those sorts of things are resonating with, with young people who are keen on the idea of escaping to the other side of the globe for a while. So then my personal story that, that I take them through is this tragic tale of, of I was really interested in electronics and I, I did some tertiary level training on how to fix computers that literally look like this. I didn't have a beard like that. But, um, and, and then it um, turns out this is what people are shipping and I trained in how to fix computers like this and now there's an industry where people don't fix computers at all. You know, if it fails there's a few parts and you don't have to have any training to swap parts and if you swap two or three things and it still hasn't fixed it, you've spent the value of the thing so you just throw it away. Um, so. That's a, a great story from the perspective of many of them will be worried about making the right choice. So I made a choice. It was the wrong choice. At the time, I thought I was doing the right thing, um, but I trained to do a job that no longer exists. Now I'm primarily doing web development, and the web didn't exist. You know, when, when I moved from hardware into system software and into programming, the web still didn't exist. Um, so that was something I picked up later on, as most of us did. So um, then I take them through some holiday snaps of places I've visited, um, in some cases based on um, like going somewhere for a training course or a conference or a job, um, in some cases just the, the lifestyle, the fact that, that I was working in IT um, as a contractor in London, for example, meant that lots of things were close. I was earning good money so I could go and do it, um, travel, which might be different to if, for example, you were working in a pub. You might not have the disposable cash to actually make the most of being in those places. Um, if I have time, I have this section here where I take them through a bit of Python code and, and if I have time, I get someone to come up and do it. So I've got some little cards, I set them up and I say, type in what's on here. Um, and they do stuff and up pops the turtle graphics thing and they type in what I've told them to type in and then it moves and then it turns around. And then I talk about, well, if you wanted to make a square, you just have to do that um, four times. But if we want to make a program, all we have to do is take what you've already done and copy it and paste it into a file. We want to do it four times, so paste it in four times. Um, and run that, and lo and behold, you get a square. And then taking them through, making that a bit smarter with a loop, um, making a function so that you can pass a parameter in to make squares of different sizes, um, putting all that in a loop so that you can draw squares on funky angles, then turning the square function into a polygon function um, and pointing out, and this is God's honest truth, this here, 360 divided by the number of sides, is some of the most advanced maths that I've had to do in my career as a programmer. <laughs> so if they're worried about maths, um, then that could be somewhat reassuring. Um, and then get them to, to, to read this piece of code and tell me what that's going to do. Now, I know that's not very big, but can anyone tell me what that's going to do? Going to what? Right, but you're, you're kind of reading out What's it? What's it actually going to do? It will draw a triangle. It will be an equilateral triangle. And also these numbers are a bit bigger than the numbers we had before, so it's going to draw a large triangle. But then, what's this going to do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's close enough to a circle. Um, and that's another 
kind of useful lesson that, that sometimes you're presented with a problem where you don't know how to solve the problem. You can't conceive of the perfect solution to the problem, but you can come up with something that's good enough. And that, that looks like a circle. So, sometimes I get a <gasps> from one person, not tonight, sadly. <laughs> Um, another thing, we often talk about technology and we concentrate on specific technology, but why are we using technology in the first place? It's to solve problems. That's a message that I've found resonates more with um, the girls in the classes. Some of them aren't very interested in this, and when you start talking about solving problems rather than RAM and ROM and megahertz and all that stuff, um, then they, they become a bit more interested. So this is um, different types of programs. Um, this is um, a program I wrote to solve a problem at our house um, when our, our books were due back at the library. Um, uh, when we fire up a web browser, this is our home page, and down here it's telling us in orange that one book is due soon, so we need to find it. If it was overdue, it would be red. Um, the, as you mouse over the, the books, a picture of the cover comes up so you know what you're looking for as you're looking under the, the things on the couch. Um, this, this was something I wrote when our kids were relatively small, like about five years old or whatever. And one day it stopped working because the Wellington City Library had done an upgrade. And it struck me, why is it not broken? Is this the first time they've ever upgraded their software? That was about 12 years ago, and I've never needed to touch it since. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's doing the most awful things, scraping out bits of pseudo-JSON from the... And, and it never changes. I'm appalled, quite frankly. <laughs> They're not. No, definitely not. Um, this is a game that many of them are familiar with and often you get stuck, so I wrote a program to cheat. They call it cheating. Almost universally they say, that's cheating. But, you know, it was a challenge. It, it was fun to do. Um, then I throw some opinions at them, my opinions about who would make a good program, programmer, someone with a brain and who is prepared to use it. Someone who is has a love of learning because you have to keep learning in this job. Things are changing, you have to change and adapt yourself. People who like building stuff, solving problems. That's the person who's too short to reach the water fountain, just in case anybody is in any doubt what's going on there. Um, people who really enjoy reading. I think reading a book and building up that picture in your head of this is what the characters look like, this is what the, the house they live in, that sort of thing. A lot of that's similar to when you're coding and you're building up a picture in your head of your data structures and how they relate and the different parts of your program. Being able to imagine what's going to happen with the code that you're writing rather than having to write and run every single step as you go. Um, and the fact that it's a team pursuit, um, and also pointing out that actually not all programmers are um, couch <coughs> potatoes who play games uh, 24 hours a day. Um, and then some things that people could do right now if they wanted to be a programmer. Um, lots of them have done this. Um, this is a, a great website that um, has online tutorial that, that leads you through stuff. There are tons of those. That was just one that I've had a look at. Um, these free books that you can download. Um, it's got games in the name. I don't, don't set them up to think that these are fantastic games, but they're games that you can understand the mapping between the code and what's <coughs> going on on the screen. Um, so that's important. Um, and Raspberry Pi is a lot of fun. Um, then I give them a bit of, uh, you're not 
really allowed to promote your company in these sessions, but um, I've got away with promoting our open source academies here, partly because they're free. Um, and um, then I ask them if they've got any questions, and they never do. They're always very, very quiet. Um, I just slip that up, and, and sometimes people will be reminded, oh, yeah, I was one tester. Can you tell me about testing video games? Because they always want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, they need reminding that they probably want to ask about what subjects they should be doing. Um, and I remind them that there's an expert coming along to answer those questions. But the one little anecdote that I tell them that breaks my heart every time is that the subject that I did at school that has been the most useful to me on a daily basis is English. And I hated it with a passion. Um, so don't neglect your English. Being able to communicate clearly is a critical piece of working in a team. Um, so that was that. So obviously I just raced through that, but um, sure many of you could similarly talk about the path you followed to get to be doing what you're doing, um, could talk about the sorts of problems you're solving for your customers, um, could talk about where your job has taken you. Um, that's the sort of thing that um, ITP and Tech Hub are interested in. Um, if I do, oh, that's unfortunate. I thought I'd opened a new tab, obviously not. Um, the website is techhub.nz. Uh, 